Nation, it is Thursday. I am Philip DeFranco, and this is me talking about newsy type stuff and things that matter to me today. Welcome. And the first thing I want to talk about today is my dirty little secret. Lindsay Lohan was arrested last night, just days after her hilariously terrible comeback movie, Liz and Dick, arrested. Which, by the way, I love that she was so excited and promoting the movie until she realized everyone was making fun of her and she was like, oh, it's just bad scripting. Apparently, I'm not supposed to play the same character from Parent Trap or Mean Girls when I'm doing a biopic. But she was reportedly booked on suspicion of third degree misdemeanor assault for hitting another woman in the face during an argument at a club. And all of this begs the question, Will she actually go to jail? Lindsay Lohan seems to be capable of just doing whatever the hell she wants. Like literally anybody else would have gone to jail and been there for a very long time at this point. Someone out of the public eye that doesn't have money, you're going to jail. Imagine if a young black man was booked on all of her same charges. You think he'd be walking? I don't want to make it a race thing, but be honest with yourself. Do you think that that person would be out? And if you're like, Phil, how messed up is Lindsay Lohan right now? Today, she's facing four new criminal charges on different coasts of the country. One for allegedly hitting someone in the face in New York, which would be just another reason to revoke her probation. And then on the West Coast here in California, she's being charged with giving false information to a peace officer, punishable by up to six months in jail, obstructing or resisting a police officer in the performance of his duty, punishable by one year in jail, and reckless driving, punishable up to 90 days in jail. It's just ridiculous, and in California, you, you, you kind of already know what's likely going to happen. Her sentence, if she is actually sentenced, will likely be something like, she's charged to 60 days in jail, but it's reduced down to five days because overcrowding, man. That'll teach that woman who we should probably make an example of at this point. And Asian next up, I want to talk about Kim Ridley. Kim owns his own company in Eugene, Oregon called Ridley's Rides where he sells motorcycles, cars, whatever. But he's in the news today because there was this outrage over this photo. And I was like, why? It's a kind of crappy looking 260Z in an empty, deserted parking lot with a kind of skanky looking girl. Come to find out that kind of skanky looking girl is his daughter. Which, by the way, to the future parents of the world, if you name your daughter Lexa with two X's, like that that's just like asking for her to be a stripper or like a glamour model who sometimes blows DJs. That is just basic science that I invented in my head right now to try and prove a point. But Kim Ridley defended his use of his daughter and her friends. I love this guy. He says, quote, Girls and dogs attract people's attention, which is exactly the reason I'm going to start a new series called Girls and Puppies Gone Wild. It's gonna be huge. I'm currently taking on investors. I accept money hot dogs, and also compliments. And as an example of what people are saying about this whole situation, we have Lindy Cross, she has her own blog called mommy -ish. She says, quote, The fact that a father has no problem objectifying and sexualizing his own daughter for personal gain is just so disturbing. To see no problem with these obviously exploitive photos is completely insane. This is the man's child. It's the girl he's supposed to love and protect, not take scantily clad photos to sell old cars. To which I say, ah, kinda. Even though these pictures make me feel like ill and then double ill when you find out that, you know, this is his daughter. But at the end of the day, what you really have is a business arrangement between two consenting adults. Now, it is disgusting-ish. Now, just disgusting uh, that it is a father and a daughter and uh, there are shots like this. And that's that, I guess. Then in Sexy Time News, something that I was very excited about. Last year, there was this thing called the Hot Shots Calendar. Lucy Pinder and a bunch of other models did these retro, like, World War II pinup model pics and they put out a calendar and I loved it. And then for this year, they released a bunch of preview pictures, which uh, I made a gallery for you, for your perusing. The girls they use this year were Sam Cooke, Emily O'Hara, India Reynolds, Holly Pierce, Kelly Hall, and finally my personal favorite, Miss Rosie Jones. Perhaps the best thing Britain ever made. If you'd like to see those people's daughters doing those things, uh, once again, links to those down below. I am personally buying it. I mean, I usually don't buy, like, other people's calendars, clothing, uh, posters, because I have my own clothing and poster company. That and I also sometimes wear stuff from Jack Threads. <gasps> I haven't found a way to fit that sponsor in there before, but if you want to get some, uh, some cool clothes, I know a lot of you guys sometimes ask what I'm wearing when I don't look like a homeless person or I'm wearing my own clothes, I go to jackthreads.com slash philly d. It's free to sign up. Also, for every one of you that does sign up, they donate some money to the Philip DeFranco Loves Eating Steak Fund, which is actually not a charity so much as a, uh, nickname I gave my bank account. There was that. But main point, hot girls. And for the ladies and the gays, since I gave you that man meat extravaganza yesterday and you were like, yay! I don't feel so weird that Phil's objectifying women because he also showed off some man meat. It's completely okay to think another man is attractive, so I made another gallery for you of Mr. Joel McHale. If you don't find Mr. Joel McHale attractive, I don't like you as a friend anymore. We're not friends. We can't hang out. I'm sorry. 
I just really like making a big deal and walking away these days. Then there's the consumer type news that AT&T for the second year in a row was voted the worst cell phone carrier in America. Meanwhile, Verizon took the top spot for the most loved cell phone carrier and you know, that, that actually kind of hits home. I jumped from AT&T to Verizon, honestly. It is so much better. Like literally the only bad thing was I got the new iPhone and on Verizon you can't talk to someone on the phone at the same time as like searching something. But if there is kind of a silver lining to the story, AT&T did not get a lot of complaints on their new 4G LTE. In fact, it might be one of the better 4G services. If you're talking about speed and not the amount of locations and coverage areas. Also, it should be noted that the fiscal cliff is approaching and Democrats and Republicans still haven't come to an agreement. So since talking about that would kind of be a non-story because nothing is happening. Today I saw this picture of the one-on-one -on -one meeting between Barack Obama and Mitt Romney and it is easily the most awkward picture ever. Correction, most awkward picture I've seen today. Correction, most awkward picture I've seen today of Barack Obama and Mitt Romney with a person that kind of seems to be peeking into the room. But you just look at that picture and you know the conversation's essentially like, so, is it like, yeah, no, it's super fun. Being president is super, super fun. I knew it. Then I really wanted to talk about this thing I found called hobojacket.tk. And it's this winter drive project where, you know, people donate money, they donate coats, they give them to the poor, but this site had a competitive angle saying, winters are cold. You'd like to see hobos clad in your rival school's jackets. Welcome to hobojacket.com. So you give a jacket to a homeless person, but only if like, let's say you hate like Florida State, you give that homeless person a Florida State jacket so people associate homeless people with Florida State fans. And this kind of hurts my brain because it's fantastically objectifying slash exploitive of homeless people, but it comes with a good thought. And this project was created by a guy that goes to MIT by the name of Jin Pan. And at the time of one of his latest interviews, 660 jackets had gone to the homeless because of this program. But the big update today was he took the site down with an apology letter, saying, I thought I had a clever idea for leveraging existing college rivalries to raise money to provide warm clothing for the homeless. But I did not actually understand that my gimmick was dependent on objectifying the homeless. The site's so-called edgy manner was designed to spread quickly, but I realize now that it also allowed my insensitivity to go viral. I wish I could rewind time back to Sunday and reverse the decision to take the site live. I'm sorry that I offended so many and I'm disappointed in my own lack of judgment. I've matured a lot over the last three days in listening to the flood of more mature voices out there. I especially apologize for those who can't as easily speak up for themselves, JP. Which JP, if MIT does not work out for you, you could definitely be like a professional apology writer. And two, a question I want to pass on to the nation, even though this may have been insensitive, I want to know if you think it is, but even with it being maybe insensitive or objectifying, it does the good stuff, the, the coats for the homeless, would that outweigh the kind of bad taste of the overall site? It's something I find interesting in kind of a gray area, like when those people, those movie producers, use the homeless, uh, they like had signs for movies that were coming out, and people were like, oh, it's genius, they're giving money to homeless people and they're giving them jobs, but other people were like, well, they're exploiting them. They're just looking for a story and for people to talk about it. So think about it and let me know in the comments down below. But guys, that's really everything I wanted to talk about today. Of course, that is not all the news. If you are not 100% filled in, go get SourceFed. YouTube.com slash SourceFed. Some other awesome stuff happened today, and not so awesome stuff. You know, just life. Thanks to that and everything else down below. But Nation, all of that does bring us to the question of the day today, which is, I had some stuff earlier, but I want you to caption that picture of Mitt Romney and Barack Obama. Leave your best caption in the comments down below. And remember to possibly win a $100 Amazon gift card. Leave a comment down below. Join the conversation. Maybe if you really like it, click the like button. Favorite it. But of course, as always, my name's Philip DeFranco. You've just been filled in. I love your faces, and I'll see you Sunday. Or Monday. Or Sunday. Probably Monday.